Hey guys, it's Jake here with eTrailer. Today we have a 2020 Volvo XC90, and we're gonna be taking a look at it, and I'm gonna show you how to install the Stealth Hitch trailer hitch receiver. The biggest difference between this trailer hitch receiver and many others that we have on our website is that when you're not using this hitch, um, the Volvo XC90 is a very stylish vehicle. You can twist the release knob and pull the hitch receiver off. Um, and as you can see, there's nothing that you can see behind it. If you get way behind the vehicle, you can see just the tabs of our um, safety chain loops. But other than that, you're not gonna be able to see anything. A lot of people don't like when you have a very stylish car like this, they don't like to see the hitch receiver hanging down below the rear fascia of the car. There's gonna be two different versions of this kit that you can get. One is gonna be just for accessories, so for bike racks and cargo carriers and stuff like that. Um, and then there's gonna be a tow package, which is gonna come with the hitch receiver tube and a ball mount. Um, the accessory package is only gonna come with the hitch receiver tube. The biggest difference there is that you cannot put a ball mount inside this receiver tube. I know it seems silly because that's how every other hitch on the market is, but the way that Stealth Hitches has designed this kit is that they don't want any extra movement in this from a ball mount and the weight of a trailer to be pulling down on their mechanism. Um, if you want to tow a trailer, I always recommend when you're installing this hitch, and you'll see later on in the installation, to just go ahead and get the whole kit. Um, it is a little bit more money, but you're going to be much happier, especially if you go to sell the vehicle. You're going to be able to tell people that you have the tow package. It will come with the wiring that you need to install it, um, which is really nice because it'll have a seven pole pre-installed on there, or that you will install, and then you have a four pole adapter that comes with the kit. So. Stealth Hitch really takes care of you and in including everything you need in order to tow a trailer. The way that this hitch receiver is going to attach inside is you line up the, this peg with the hole and then firmly press upward. It'll lock into place, this hand knob will turn and then on the other side you can push the lock and everything's locked into place. Um, the, the ball mount and the hitch receiver tube will go in the same way. Um, our weight capacities for this hitch are going to be 600 pounds of tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube or on the ball. Gross trailer weight rating is gonna be 6,000 pounds. So just keep that in mind for whenever you're hooking up to your trailer. That is the trailer plus the load included. If you get the tow package, it will include safety chain loops on either side that are gonna fit a variety of different sizes of safety chains. Uh, these S-hooks tend, tend to work really, really well in there. Um, we've got a, another style here and it, it works, but it's not, it's not as smooth operating. Um, these work really well. I do recommend getting a self, uh, set of safety chains or safety cables that have the little keeper on it. Um, it just ensures that you um, have a, a nice solid connection there and also you may have to get a little bit longer chains on your trailer so that you have a little bit of more droop in them so they don't come in contact with the bottom of your fascia this kit as we mentioned before will come with if you get the tow package will come with your seven pole wiring which is going to be right underneath here you connect your wiring and then um, uh, that's where you that's essentially where you connect your trailer to to get seven pole wiring if you have a four pole trailer then you just use the adapter when you're not using your hitch you simply put the key in the other side unlock the button or the lock then twist the knob and your accessory comes right out they do include a plug so that the inside of the um, shank, I guess, where it connects will stay nice and clean so it ensures smooth operation. Now a few measurements so you know what you guys are getting. From the ground to the top inside of the receiver tube, it's about 14 and a half inches, which is more than enough clearance. Uh, if you have a bike rack or a cargo carrier you're wanting to use with this, they should sit high enough off the ground you don't have to worry about them dragging. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper, 
it's going to be about flush. So that's going to give you a lot of clearance if you need to fold a bike rack or a cargo carrier up to your vehicle if you're not using it on a trip uh, when you get there. This would typically be a big issue with a lot of other hitches because of hitting your shin on it because it sticks out so far. But because it's a stealth hitch, you're going to be able to remove it so you don't have to worry about that. Now, as far as the insulation goes, this install is not going to be too bad. I will recommend, again, if you're going to pick up this hitch, I always like the option that if later on down the road I decide to rent a trailer or pull a trailer or pick up a piece of equipment from a rental company, that I have the capability of using my hitch to pull a trailer. So I would, I would recommend to pick up the kit because it will require you to take the fascia back off to put your tow hooks on or your safety chain loops on and to install your wiring. So it just, if you have to take off the fascia once, um, to me that's a lot easier than having to come back later on and do it again. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the install. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here by our rear wheel wells. We're gonna need to pop this trim piece off. Your instructions will say to take it completely off, uh, but all we're gonna need to do is get to the bolts behind this panel because we have to take the rear fascia off. Uh, what we've done in the past is we just take it off to about the halfway point, stick a piece of paper towel in there, and that'll be enough to hold it out of the way for us. But we're gonna grab some painter's tape and tape off these seams so that we don't, um, we don't end up scratching our paint with this piece coming off. While we were at it, we went ahead and taped off this portion because we're gonna have to pop this piece off too. But to remove this trim piece, we'll just have to pull back might be um, a little tough if you've never taken them off before. Just work your way up and uh, we're going to stop about there. You can take it off all the way if you want to, uh, but again, we're just going to take a shop towel, stick it in here, and it'll hold it off our car like that. In our wheel well, we're going to have five T25 Torx head screws that we're going to need to remove. There's one here, here, and then there's three going down on our mud flat. Take a small ratchet. If you don't have one of these, um, this is a pretty unique little tool. You can, you should be able to get a small screwdriver in back here, or just use a uh, nut driver. We opened up our rear hatch. We'll take a pair of pliers, twist this uh, anti-vibration nib and we'll have one on each side that we need to remove. Underneath the vehicle, we'll have two T25 Torx bits on each side, so a total of four that we'll need to remove. So we'll just keep working our way down. Um, you can eventually get your hand in behind it to get the last one on the bottom. We'll just work it out. One down there is giving us a little bit of trouble. There we go. Pop that one loose. Then we can work our way down our fascia and pop it out. Luckily with this car, you don't have to take the rear tail lights out. Most of the time you do. We'll pop it out to here. We'll stop and we'll grab another set of hands and then we can remove the whole fascia. We'll pull back on our fascia get it popped out from underneath our tail light. And when you're pulling out on this, you wanna look for some wiring. We've got a wiring harness right here. We'll have to remove this, by pushing in on this tab. And pulling out. There we go. And then we can set our fascia to the side. Now we can take a 15 millimeter socket and remove the three bolts that are attaching our bumper beam to each side. We'll leave one slightly on so that we can remove the others without worrying about the beam falling off. Then with our, the nuts loosen, take them off. This bumper beam is actually pretty light compared to most of them that we deal with here. Um, so it's e very easy to handle by yourself. And we'll set this aside. And we're gonna take a pair of tin snips, 
cut this line here. We'll have an identical line over on the other side. I kind of got sloppy with my lines here, but um, you get the point. The What we're gonna do is we'll take a pair of tin snips, cut here on both sides up to that line, and then we're gonna fold this piece. Next, we're just gonna slide our hitch over top of our factory studs, then take our bumper beam, put it back in place, and we'll have these 15 millimeter nuts that come in your kit. We'll thread those on. There's gonna be three of them. Again, like we took off for the factory for each side, and then we'll have one bolt we'll have to put in the bottom. Last piece of hardware we need to put in before we torque down these, this hardware is we'll take the bolt included in your kit, slide on a lock washer and a flat nut, and we will thread it into the square hole, which should be the fourth hole in your bumper beam. We have weld nuts back here, but if you don't have weld nuts, they do include another um, set of nylon lock nuts that you'll put on the back side. But with that in place, we'll do the same on the other side and tighten and torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Now, in order to get our hitch block in place, um, if you're just installing the hitch to use it with accessories, I um, mean, you don't have the tow package, the way you'll put this in is you'll slide the block up, slide your two bolts in, put your two nylon lock nuts on the other side and torque it down. Um, but for us today, we're putting the tow package on, which I highly recommend because it opens it up to many more options. What we're gonna do is we'll start with our wiring bracket, slide our bolts through it, like so. Take our tow hook, or our safety chain loops, and you'll want this hole facing the heat shield. Slide that bracket on. Grab our block with the handle on the right. Slide that over. This is kind of a puzzle, but if you get it right, we'll lift it up into place and then slide our bolts through. And we'll take our other safety chain loop, put it on the other side, followed by our nylon lock nuts. Using a 15-16 socket on each side, we will torque these to the specifications to the instructions. Now, if you just got the hitch receiver and you didn't get the tow package, um, that's gonna do it for the installation. You can throw your fascia back on the way that you took it off. Um, but again, for us, we have the tow package we're installing today, so we have to do the wiring next. To start the wiring, we'll take, open up this rear trunk hatch, set this aside, and then we're gonna come in here to the passenger side, remove this uh, little storage bin, and we need to disconnect some wires. Next, we'll take this little bin out, push these two tabs, pull it up, Set that to side. And then in here, you'll have two connectors that have uh, some foam on it. We'll take that foam off. Looks like there's tape wrapped around it. Pop those off. And these are what is going to connect to our new control box that came with our kit. Next, taking the harness that comes in our kit, you'll get a new grommet. So we need to pop this grommet out and you won't need that one anymore. We'll take our wiring. We actually might have better luck trying to slide it out from the inside, but we'll try this way first. Take our ground wire and all of our other wiring, stick it into the hole and then we'll go on the inside of our vehicle and pull it out the rest of the way. Now with our wires run through the grommet, we can take our factory wires, connect them to the control unit that will come with your uh, wiring kit, 
actually we're going to save this connector because it's a little shorter our connector for our seven pole is right here we'll connect that and then make the last factory connection and what we'll want to do with this box i already stuck one side of the uh, hook and loop to it we'll peel this off and then we're going to try to find a good place inside here to stick it. I found a good place on the other side of this panel. I'm hoping I can get those wires down and in there. Now we ended up attaching this control box to the sidewall here. We just peeled back this insulation, stuck it there, and then we ran our ground wire underneath and connected it to this ground stud right here. And all we had to do was pull out the foam panel that was sitting right here. We just took our wiring, ran it out the grommet, ran it around because our face is going to go back up here and then zip tied it tight to the top of the hitch. And you just want to make sure you run it down so we can make our connection to our seven pole right here. To get our seven pole wired up, we took the two screws out of, or the one screw out of each side and you'll have to take it, shake the inside to get it to come out. And then we can loosen all these screws including the center one. We'll strip back our wires and we'll show you which ones to connect where. Now, when we wired up this plug, uh, there's going to be some labels on here and they may or may not be right. Ours are not right for the colors that go to uh, the specific wires. You'll wanna check in the owner's manual um, to see what this wiring uh, looks like on here, but we can go over it real quick. The black will go to black on here. The brown will go to the label of green on the plug. The green will go to brown. Blue will go to blue. White goes to white. Yellow goes to the red spot. And then your uh, purple or magenta wire will go in the center. We can take this and you'll want to th thread your uh, cap on before you do that. And we'll take it and we'll slide it back into place. Make sure you line this groove up with the groove on the inside of the plug. Pull it through. There we go. And turn it until you get it to lock into place. There we go. Clip it down in there and then we'll replace those two screws we took out earlier. Now we'll need to take our bracket and you want it to be facing down, um, so the little tab on it will be higher than the bracket. You'll install your wiring with the opening facing down and this tab facing you. It'll be a lot easier to reach than to try to pull it back here from the side. Um, that way you can get your seven pole connected in there. Um, but with that, we can then come up to our fuse panel, and you will get a fuse included in your kit. Um, we'll take a, grab this lid off of our fuse panel down here and uh, we'll show you where we need to connect this fuse at. And the fuse that comes in your kit will need to go right here in between these two fuses. Push down on it. There we go. Next, we need to work on trimming our fascia. You want to start with measuring from the edge of this tab. Our fascia is flipped over. Our exhaust outlets are right here on the ends. Um, this is looking at the bottom. Three quarters of an inch from the edge of this um, tab here. Make a mark. Do a gentle arch up to the top. It says measure from the bottom here, two inches up. It's essentially just the bottom of this ledge and then come over from that original mark at three quarters, 16 inches over, make another mark, and do another, another gentle curve. The gentle curve is just to make it look a little nicer if you're ever underneath the vehicle to see it. Um, now we're gonna take a multi-tool and cut this out. Now, on certain models, you may be able to test the wiring. Uh, we tested it and it's not working and that means we have to take it to Volvo. Some models you have to have them program it into the module for the wiring to work. So we'll take our fascia here with an extra set of hands and reconnect our wiring and put our fascia back on. Now with everything reinstalled, we can take our hitch. What you wanna do is you'll grab that knob on the side of your hitch, turn it all the way towards the front of your vehicle 
uh, clockwise and then it's ready to receive whether you're using the receiver or the ball mount. Slide it up and it'll automatically lock in place and then you can push the side button to lock it. But other than that, that's going to do it for installation. Well guys, hopefully this video was able to help you decide whether or not the Stealth Hitch Receiver is right for your 2020 Volvo XC90.